Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Well, folks, I wonder who's going to be elected president of the new Jotham Down store. Will it be Lum or will it be Abner? Abner was out in front last night, but there's still a lot of precincts to be heard from yet. Now, you can cast a vote for your favorite, you know, and at the same time get a handy little aluminum flashlight with the compliments of Lum and Abner. A powerful, useful, little pocket-sized flashlight. The same kind that you'd have to pay 75 cents for if you bought it in a store. But all you have to do to get this fine little flashlight is send in the outside wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. You can use a wrapper from any size package, either natural or chocolate flavor, but it must be from Horlicks malted milk powder. Wrappers from Horlicks tablets are not eligible. All right, write your name and address on the back of the wrapper and then mail it, enclosing 10 cents to cover packing and mailing costs to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. You got that? All right. Now to cast a vote in the contest for the presidency of the new Jotham Down store, simply write either Lum's name or Abner's name, depending on which of the old fellows you want to see elected, when you write your own name and address on the back of the wrapper. Cast a vote and send in for a flashlight right away, folks. Tonight, before you forget it. Lum and Abner would like to hear from every one of their friends out on the party line. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Now that Lum has been released from jail, he is determined to win the race for president of the Jotham Down store. Yesterday, he made a plea over the party line, soliciting votes, and is making every effort to beat Abner. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find the two old fellows down at their office. They have just finished counting the votes that have come in today. Listen. Well, I still think that there's something wrong there, Lom. I just don't believe it. Well, I just put down what you told me to. You counted the votes yourself. Yeah, I know I did. Count them twice as far as that goes. But what I can't understand is why everybody turned right around and started voting for you all of a sudden here. Well... (laughs) I reckon they just now figured out which one of us is the best qualified for the office. So it, 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 it's the biggest batch of mail we've got yet, and, and there weren't but 14 votes in there for me. <laughs> Looky there. Uh-huh. Yeah, according to these figures now, I might not catch up with you. Catch up with I'm you? Uh, just 326 votes behind now. <laughs> and if the mail runs half as good tomorrow as it did today, I, I'm going to be so far ahead of you, you never will catch up with me. Well, I'll be dead blamed if I can understand it. What did you tell him when you made that announcement on the party line yesterday down at Dick's store? Well, I just said I'd appreciate it if they'd vote for me. Yeah, is that all you said? Yes, sir. You can ask Dick what I said. He heard every word of it. Dog, I don't believe it. You must have said something bad about me to get everybody to change over to your side all of a sudden this way. No, I never said a word about you, Abner. I just told him about the flashlight and how we'd appreciate them sending in and all that stuff, but I never said one word about you. Well, you must have said something, Lom. Folks just don't turn around and go right again a fella for no reason at all that way. No, at the time I was talking on the party line, I weren't so worked up over the contest as I am now. I just ain't been trying up to now. This contest has sort of turned into a campaign, though. I've been in politics too long to just sit back and let somebody beat me out of office. Yeah, well, I'm going to get out and do some campaigning myself, too. I'll tell you that right well, now. Go ahead and do all you can, Abner. Well, I do it. I aim to. If I was you, I, I tell you, Abner, you may as well withdraw from the contest right now and save yourself a lot of embarrassment. Withdraw? Yes, sir. I'll never do. Well, you ain't got a chance, Abner. Huh, that's what you think. As long as you was going around here with both the arms in a sling, folks felt kind of sorry for you. I can understand that. Them votes you was getting was just out of sympathy. But now, since you took them bandages off, you ain't got a chance. Yeah. I still think I ought to kept them on a little while longer, too. Till after the contest, anyway. I don't believe that my arms is good and well yet. Don't believe they're good and well. No, sir. They, they've been bothering me a right smart long since we took them splints off this morning. Well, how could they be bothering you? <laughs> there wasn't nothing wrong with them to start with. Your arms wasn't broke. Uh-oh. No, that's right. I don't get there's something wrong with them, old arm. They've just been aching something wonderful all day. Well, naturally they'd bother you some after being rocked up so long that way. The circulate's just now starting up again, I reckon. Yeah, right. I, I believe, Lama, we better just go ahead and, and drop them back up. No, there. no, you don't. No, sir. No, sir. You just want to get folks to feel them sorry for you again so you'll get some more votes. I know what you're up to. Oh, Sassy, Sassy. 
Sassy Press. I weren't worrying none about the votes. I still got a big lead on you. Yeah, you have right now, but just recollect the battle ain't over till the last shot's fired. Huh? I say the battle ain't over till the last shot's fired. What battle? Why, the battle between me and you. I say it ain't over till the last shot's fired. Well, now, Lom, now, here, now, wait a minute, now. I, I don't think we ought to take it that serious now, Lom. That's just going too far. Of course, I'd love to get elected president of the store, but now, I don't think we ought to get no trouble over it. Get no trouble over it? Yeah, Lom, we've just been friends for so long, been partners and neighbors, and we did for one another when we were sick and lent one another money and everything. I, I just... Hate to see something like this end up in a roof. Well, there ain't no use for us to get mad about no, it. No, that's get, what I say. No, get no roof. Just let the best man win. Yeah, but now, what if one of us gets killed, Lom? We'd have our regrets over the rest of our lives. Well, ain't nobody going to get killed. You need to worry none about that. Yeah, I don't know now. That's awful dangerous business, packing firearms for one another. Well, undoubtedly, you ain't going to start carrying no gun for me, are you? You're that blame right I am. You mean you'd take a gun and shoot me just over this election? Why, well, sure I would. I'd hate mighty bad to do it, but now, if you think that I'm just going to stand around and let you do all the shooting without some way to protect myself, you've got well, another Well, here, here, wait a minute. I never said nothing about shooting you. You did done it. I heard you. Just because you seen I was going to take up for my rights, why, now you're trying to back out. Doggy, you just jumped on the wrong fella this time, Lom. Us Peabody's is awful peaceful folks. Tries to treat everybody nice, but I don't get when you start shooting at us, now you've got a fight on your hands. Well, uh, great, I and am. You think just because <laughs> I'm wearing spectacles that I can't see to do no good. But I can still hamstring a deer at 100 yards long. If you've made up your mind to settle this contest with firearms, I don't get I'm ready for you any time you want to get started. I have no where in the world did you get the idea in your head that I was going to start shooting at you. Why, you said so yourself. Why, well, I never done no you such a thing. Too. You did, too. Said this battle betwixt me and you wasn't going to be over till the last shot was fired. I know that I aim to be the one to fire. Well, you just misunderstood me, Abner. I, I heard what you said. You said it twice. I asked you over again, just to be sure. Yeah, that's what I said, but I didn't mean I was going to yeah, join up. Yeah, yeah, what's going on in here? Well, howdy, Dick. Oh, I hear you fellas talking clear outside the store there. What's the matter? Oh, just a little misunderstanding here between me and Abner. Sit down, Dick. I know it. Any time they think they can bluff us Peabody's out, they've got another guest coming. We've always been noticed fighting stuff. Nobody ain't trying to bluff you out, Abner. Just forget about it. Yeah, yeah, forget about it. Forget about it. And then let you slip up behind my back and shoot me. No, oh, sir. For goodness sakes, Abner. Well, what in the world's wrong with you fellas anyway? Oh, Lom's trying to start some trouble with me. Draw the gun on me a while ago. I never done no such a thing. Why? Well, you said you was going to, and that's just the same as. Well, what's the argument about, anyway? Oh, nothing, Dick. This crazy idiot here, he can't understand nothing. We was talking about the contest a while ago, and I told him the battle wasn't over till the last shot was and fired. That's just what he said. Just the word. He got the idea in his head that I was aiming on shooting him. <laughs> well, Abner, he didn't mean that he was really going to shoot you. And I don't want him shooting at me, neither. Dick, there ain't no use to try to explain it to him. The more you talk to him, the worse he gets. I know my right. I've learned long ago the best way to do when he gets mixed up this way is just to shut up about it. Let him cool off. He, he's just doing a lot of talking. Talking? Just doing a lot of talking? That's all you're doing. Yeah. Well, that's so right there that you don't know us Peabody from. We're dangerous people to meddle with. How many more than eight people had anybody by the name of Edwards ever shot? Huh? I say, how many more than eight people has anybody by the name of Edwards ever shot? Well, <laughs> I don't know hardly none, I hope. <laughs> well, Uncle Zeke Peabody did. Back when uh, Peabody and the Jenkinses were a feuding, why, well, he shot eight of them in one season. Well, that ain't nothing to be bragging about. Well, it ain't nothing to be ashamed of. You never used but nine cartridges. Well, just forget about shooting, Abner. Shooting who? Well, just forget about shooting. We're not going to have no trouble now, <laughs> just... Just calm down. You'll be all right, Gregory, and then you'll be shamed the way you've been talking. Why, well, sure, Abner. <laughs> you just got things all mixed up here. Lum didn't mean that at all. You just <laughs> misunderstood him. Well, look there. I, I hadn't noticed that you got the bandages off your arm. Yeah, and I'm glad I done it now, too. I hate to get in a gunfight with both my arms wrapped up and spring it that way. Yeah. Yeah, look there. I don't get out in the door just as fast as that. Here, Abner, put that gun up. Yeah, put that up, Abner. Swan, ever since he's got to be constable where he can carry that gun without being rested, he packs it every place he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to make him eat it one of these days. Yeah, you better be careful about that, Abner, sure enough. Well, uh, how's the contest coming, Lum? I 
Oh, she got an awful lot of mail today. Oh, yeah, I aim to tell you, Dick. Uh, you know, out of all them letters you and Cedric brung over here, Abner never got but 14 votes. <laughs> yeah, all the rest of them was for me. Well, say, you kind of stated to come back, didn't oh, you? Oh, yeah, I think that talk I gave them on the party line yesterday sort of woke some of them up. Yeah, well, I knew if you just made up your mind to get in there and fight that you could make good contest. Oh, yeah, I aim to put on a campaign now like you never heard of before. <laughs> make that old campaign speech here, was you? Yeah, <laughs> recollect when I ran for Justice of the Peace here a few years back yeah. and Squire Skimp was running again? Yeah, that was a hot contest. Well, I'm going to adopt some of them same tactics on this <laughs> Put signs around town and everything. <laughs> Come speak to the county if necessary. Well, that's the thing to do. You and Abner both just work your best. I'm going over to Cherry Hill tonight to make a little talk. Oh, yeah? It's a good roads meeting over there. I think I'll get up there and tell them about the contest while I'm over there. Oh, my feet and all. Yeah, well, I was aiming on going over there that meeting, too, I heard about today. Well, uh, Granny, if you're going, I'd love to ride over with well, you. Why, sure. I'd be glad to have you. There's plenty of room, Mom. Just get in and go with us. I'm getting enthusiastic. Or enthusiastic. Yeah, enthusiastic over this <laughs> contest now, uh, only ain't but uh, 326 votes behind, you know. Well, say, now, this is developing into a pretty close contest now. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing there, Abner? I don't guess it can't be there. What are you talking about? You can't get that gun in your mouth there. I know I can't. That's what I say. Nobody could make me eat this gun if they wanted to. I didn't figure you know what you was talking well, about. Well, put that gun up. I'll there. put it up when I get good and ready. Well, you're going to hurt somebody. I you, ain't going to. You put it up right now. Here, give me that. Oh, gun. yeah, don't. Turn loose now, Lum. Turn loose. Get here. away. Give turn loose. Get away from here, Lum. Oh, my goodness. Well, we imagine that this argument seems to have ended rather seriously after all. But we also imagine that neither of the old fellows will be hurt badly enough, but what they'll appreciate your votes. Now, I'm sure that every one of you will want to cast a vote for either Lum or Abner in this big race for the presidency of the new Jot em Down store. You can cast a vote, you know, when you send in for one of those fine pocket-sized flashlights that Lum and Abner are offering to all Horlicks malted milk powder users. So send in for a flashlight. Do it right away, tonight. Here's how you send in your request. Write your name and address on the back of the outside wrapper. Not the label on the bottle, but the outside wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. Now, you may use a wrapper from any size package, but it must be a Horlicks malted milk powder wrapper. Don't send in wrappers from Horlicks tablets, for they are not eligible. Well, mail your wrapper with your name and address and with 10 cents to cover packing and mailing costs to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. And here's how to cast a vote in the contest between Lum and Abner for the presidency of the new Jot'em Down store. Simply write either Lum's name or Abner's name, whichever one you want to see get the office, when you write your own name and address on the back of the wrapper. Send in your request and vote tonight, all of you. This is not only a chance to get a fine flashlight, not only a chance to elect your favorite to the presidency of the new Jot'em Down store, it's more than that. It's a chance to express your appreciation of Lum and Abner and of their sponsor, the makers of Horlicks. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health. <laughs>